Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, shut up and sit down because I have more announcements to make. Now let's start with the big issue. John Cutter. Effective immediately, John Cutter has been suspended for his assaults on Dino D for the last few weeks. John, you may be called back soon, however, because I will be deciding on what I'm going to do with you very soon. And let me tell you, you won't like what I have in mind. Now let's move on to the other pain in my side that I have to deal with, the wolf pack. I Funny you mention us because we were actually just about to come out here and tell you, well, um, well, firstly, tell you to suck it because we won and your precious Wonder Boy lost again. So, ha ha ha. And secondly, it was a long debate between us as to who was going to face Max Danger for the WIW World Championship. But we did reach an answer. Ladies and gentlemen, I can confirm that the person who will be representing the Wolfpack at sudden death will not be chosen by you. You may have won the right to a title match, but since you all won it, I'm gonna make you fight for it. Tonight's main event is a triple threat match. Alex Wilson versus Stephen Thomas versus David Lees, and the winner will face Max at sudden death. Oh, and because I know you will all just lay down for each other, I'm making sure you all give 100% effort. Because I'm making it an elimination match with a twist. The only way to eliminate someone is by making them bleed. How stupid do you think we are? We know what you're trying to do, Blake, and it ain't gonna work. Just because you have no friends doesn't mean I'm falling out with mine. I told you. Dave told you, Steve told you, Sam told you. We are Wolfpack for life. And you can put us against each other all you want. But that won't hurt us. That won't separate us. We will put on the show that you want. But when it backfires on you and we come out stronger than ever, you will be the one who's crying when we come back with the World Heavyweight Championship. You really do think you're Sam, don't you? You come out here, you talk crap, and you do whatever you want because you think you can. Sam is done, and you will be too if you continue this crap. I mean, you all say that you're Wolfpack for life, but you've turned on a member before and tossed him out as if he was nothing. You're all brainwashed into thinking you're inseparable? Well... We will see how your friendship stays intact when you're all gunning for the same prize. Best of luck to you, Wilson, because I'm calling it now. You will be the next one kicked out the pack. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Darren Jacobs and welcome to episode 92 of WIW. We are back on Friday Fight Night. Can you believe that we are nearly at 100 episodes and the 100th episode will be at the Sudden Death pay-per-view where we begin tonight with some more qualifying matches. We got a ton of qualifying matches for this upcoming pay-per-view and kicking us off tonight with the qualifiers, it is the ace, Peter Bolton. 
who has been in pretty good form as of late, uh, just fell short of taking the World Heavyweight Championship from Max Danger, but he's still on the hunt for the world title. He has been at it for weeks now, trying to fight his way to the top because he knows he's a top tier contender and he's proven it on several different occasions. He's just missing out on those final opportunities. And now the ace looking to capture one of the biggest opportunities that there is, a chance to main event Insomnia if he can pull off a win in the Royal Rumble. But first he has to qualify against someone else who was in good form coming into Danger Zone, but unfortunately fell victim to the debut of the ultimate PJ McNair. It is Wilson Woodward. Wilson Woodward has always been a part of some of the biggest parts of uh, WIW. He was a part of the first ever Uprising uh, uh, Money in the Bank ladder match. Of course, he was unable to capture the briefcase, but he was the first man to qualify. He's been a part of some big, ma big matches, and of course, that Danger Zone pay-per-view, probably one of the biggest he had to deal with against the man who he thought he'd beat no matter what he wore. But when the ultimate was unleashed, boy, did it come out. But Wilson Woodward had to put up a hard fight in that one, and he put on a great show for everyone, just couldn't get the win. But what a win this would be if he can get himself into the Royal Rumble. Remember, so far, Carter James and KO Oxley are the only confirmed WIW Fight Night superstars in the Royal Rumble. But also, because of um, what the incident with John Cutter, Dino D is given a place if he is healthy enough for the Royal Rumble. So we'll have to see and wait if Dino D is going to be able to make a full recovery. But the doctors have said he's not cleared to compete for any of the fight nights building up to sudden death if he is going to get himself into this Royal Rumble match. So a speedy recovery to you, even though the general manager didn't put it in the nicest of words in his promo the other day and in this, and in this, uh, this morning as well. Peter Bolton with an early cover here. Just trying to wrap up Woodward if he can. And the ace, he's had two opportunities now at the world champion. Uh, Wilson Woodward has had none, but he has faced the current world champion before, and uh, he has faced both current world champions, actually. He faced uh, King Sam, the former world champion, and, of course, he's also faced uh, Max Danger. Couldn't come up with a win against either, but both of them admitted how tough of a task Wilson Woodward really was. So Wilson Woodward's still just looking for that final leap of faith and looking to do that at the Rumble, but he's taking out the referee there, and that's not going to help him get the cover takes the referee out inadvertently and uh, does land on Bolton. I think the referee just poor placement there on his behalf. Uh, thank you guys so much for your support, by the way. It means a lot. And, of course, thank you guys for all your kind comments on the new Mayhem intro. Hopefully you guys find the Mayhem one just as good, if not better. They are pretty good, I do have to say so myself. And the new theme song is sounding really cool. If you want to know what the song is called, there will be a description. Uh, it will be in the description to avoid us getting done for copyright. Anyway, continuing on with this matchup and Peter Bolton and, and Wilson Woodward. To be fair, pretty 50-50 so far. There have been uh, jockeying back and forth. Two top stars on this brand, and they're emerging more and more as top stars. Oh, flapjack onto the stairs. By Peter Bolton, the ace. Rolling here. Oh, and now crashing him into the stairs as well. Needs to be careful that this doesn't end a draw on count out. We saw that at the Danger Zone pay-per-view, and that didn't work out for either man. And now the count is rising, and Wilson Woodward, I'm sure he'll be happy to take this victory on count out. But he has a point to prove now after that loss to PJ McNair, after a series of wins prior to the pay-per-view against PJ McNair, he has a point to prove. Especially when he knows that PJ McNair will be qualifying for the Rumble afterwards as well. He's got a qualification match for the Royal Rumble after this tonight. And now flipping them over into the cover. Is it going to be enough? One count. And of course, tonight's show is going to be amazing. We've got a bunch of qualifiers followed by the main event, a number one contenders match for the World Heavyweight Championship. A triple threat First blood elimination match between all three surviving members of the Wolfpack. Steve, David, and Alex will all be competing against each other. And the winner will face Max Danger at sudden death for the World Heavyweight Championship. But for the ace, doing everything he can to get back in the world title hunt. And he's going to try and do it here with a superplex from the top. And he sees the discomfort. Wilson Woodward's in. This has wrapped him up before. Can he do it again? Still only a one count. And that must be worrying signs for the ace. He's laid quite a bit of uh, offense, but 
Not really getting any progress. The ace we know, a very strong contender. Very, very popular with the fans. Of course, we know he has that ace in the hall, the DDT. Very, very lethal. And of course, we know he has that new one now, that Tiger Powerbomb he calls the Royal Flush. So developing his arsenal, trying to make sure he grows. And you can see from the moment he's debuted, the development of the ace Peter Bolton has been so crazy and dramatic. And he's grown and grown into a top superstar. But he just needs to make that final jump. And maybe, just maybe, the Royal Rumble could be his ticket to do that. And now look at this spine buster. Very nicely done by the ace. And Wilson Woodward in a spot of bother here. If the ace can wrap up with one more big move, maybe that ace in the hole, maybe the Royal Flush, then maybe that'll be it for him. Wilson Woodward trying desperately to fight himself out of this corner, but the ace gets him. Big kick to the gut. And that might have set him up perfectly. Peter Bolton, the ace, with the ace in the hole. Very nicely done there by Peter Bolton. He flips over Wilson Woodward. The ref takes about a year to realize that the cover has been made. And he gets out it too as a result. And do you see Bolton's face? He was 100% certain that Wilson Woodward was about to take the loss. And he was about to go to the Royal Rumble. But Wilson Woodward we know doesn't back down that easy. And now trying to prove that there. Beautiful upside down frown. Okay then. That was a bit of a dodgy landing there for Peter Bolton. He felt that one. And Wilson Woodward... Of course, someone else in desperate need of that final push. Hasn't been able to take the TV title away from Big Willie. Hasn't had a shot at the World Championship despite all of his protests that he deserves one. So he needs to prove himself here tonight. And he might be able to do that here with the fireman's carry bomb off the top of the shoulders. Gets him up. Ace is in trouble. Oh, wait a minute. The Ace trying to power out and he does. The Ace escapes the grip. And now the kick to the gut again. This could be it for Wilson Woodward. Can the ace connect again with a second? Ace in the hole. Beautiful move by the ace. And into the cover. The ref a lot quicker into the cover this time. And Peter Bolton is going to the Royal Rumble. A huge victory for the ace tonight. Wilson Woodward put on one hell of a showing again. But once again, just couldn't land that final touch. Almost had it there as he, la he went for the big... Uh, uh, bomb off the shoulders of the fireman's carry but in the end Peter Bolton was too quick to react and he strikes first with a second DDT of the ace in the hole and the ace Peter Bolton is going to the Royal Rumble that is his spot confirmed he's made it very clear he's ready to go for max danger so it's quite likely that he will be cashing in if he wins the Rumble on the current world heavyweight champion max danger but the question is though, he's only got a spot in the Rumble. Can he survive 29 other men and make it to the main event of Insomnia? Is this the start of Peter Bolton's rise to the top? We'll have to find out very soon, but a big win for Peter Bolton tonight. Let's move on down the rest of the card. Next up tonight, some more qualifying for the Royal Rumble, and that's going to be the theme of tonight. But this isn't for the men's Royal Rumble, this is for the women's Battle Royal, where the winner of this will also be granted a Women's Championship match at Insomnia. So big prizes on the line as well for that. And Isabella Vega is out first. One of the top tier women, of course, a few weeks ago actually beating the, ch the uh, former champion, or the current champion, Laura Stables, uh, while she had, had her title lost. So Isabella Vega is a serious threat to the Women's Championship. She just hasn't been able to capture it in the only opportunity that she got, which was a triple threat match, in which I believe she wasn't pinned in. So it's a big opportunity for her to get back to the top of this first qualifying match for the Women's Championship. Tonight she goes up against someone we haven't seen in quite some time. It is one of the Cottrells. It is Jade Cottrell, who we have not seen in quite time. Sometime it's been a long time since we've seen her and like I say last time she was there I think she was teaming with Shannon of course Shannon went on to be the women's champion and kind of left her behind and uh, oh God, what is that? Well, the Jade looking very different there very different indeed to what we last saw her as and Jade Cottrell It looks like she spent some time off to uh redecorate herself I guess well Jade Cottrell we always knew was a lunatic 
She tried her best to keep it on the wraps to begin the year, but it looks like she's tired of hiding it. Jade Cottrell begins her hunt for the Mayhem Women's Championship. Uh, for the Mayhem All Fight Night Women's Championship, I guess if she wins. Oh, look at that. That is terrifying. Well, Ken, is this, this new makeup just that? Is it just makeup? Or is it really going to make the difference here tonight? Isabella Vega starting us off well. And of course, we already know that there are four women involved in the Mayhem Women's Championship match at Sudden Death. We have Isabella... Uh, no, we have Lulu Torres, Adrian Reyes, Sandra Piper, and of course, the current Women's Champion, Hayley Bowen. So, that's four women already, which means the other four women have already been decided... Because there's only four other women left on the roster. However, a lot of them are either injured or victims of um, or victims of Sandra Piper's reign as champion. So we don't know 100% if Catherine Albright is healthy. We don't know 100. We know for 100% that Elliot Rogers is not healthy. So there are quite a few women who are not in the best of shape to go and actually compete. So what is going to happen to those spots? I guess the general manager will have to decide. There's no way that Elliot Rogers is going to be quite healthy enough to compete in this women's battle royal. But technically she has a spot. Because there are only four women left eligible and there are four Mayhem spots. On the Fight Night brand, they don't have it as easy. Because we, uh, we know that Shannon and Laura Stables will more than likely have another rematch at sudden death between each other on the 100th episode of WIW. So the rest of the roster which is about six or seven other women, will have to compete for spots in this battle royal. And of course, the general manager has special guest plans for the men. What if he decides to add special guests for the women? What if he's decided that that's... Ex what if he's decided that's th the reason why? He, he wants some added women. Who knows? So they need to make sure they get the opportunities when they present itself. And that's exactly what he's trying to do here tonight for Jade Cottrell and Isabella Vega. But Vega, showing her strength. Here tonight, as usual, we know she's a very powerful woman, very good submissionist. And it's very rare in the women's division to see someone so skilled at submissions. But then again, women's champion Laura Stables had a way with submission herself. And now look what Vega's doing here. Looking to fly. Look at this. Oh, and a beautiful blockbuster by Isabella Vega. And of course, they've got some other threats coming in as well now. Because the Road to Glory Season 2 is also going to have a women's bracket if enough women apply, beautiful charging 450 splash there into the cover, only going to get the one count. And Jade Cottrell not off to a great start here, but she's going to want to fight back, and I'm sure she'll lose control at some point, and that could be the start of it there with the STO. And now what's she doing? She has her on her back here. Oh, look at the claws digging into the shoulder blades. How can they be legal? And, um... Yes, yeah, so the Road to Glory Season 2 is going to include women as well, as the general manager clarified uh, at the beginning of the show. So uh, it could be very, very interesting to see if more women come in, less opportunities coming in for the women as well. It could be a big problem. Oh, was looking to line up for the last chancery. Jade Cottrell saw it coming. And now Jade has her up on the shoulders. What's this? Oh, and a swinging Samoan driver. Very nicely done there by Jade. And now Jade ready to put Vega away. Vega in a lot of trouble here. What's Jade got in store for us? Jade. Look at this. Swinging neck breaker by Jade Cottrell. And into the cover on Isabella Vega. No, it's only a two and a half. And you can sense now Jade starting to snap. It took her a second to get into this match. Clearly some ring rust after not competing for quite some time. But now finally starting to find her feet in this match. And Jay Cottrell wasn't really one of the most successful Cottrells. Of course, her brothers were trial era tag champions. Of course, his, his, her, her other brother, Travis, first ever television champion. She hasn't really captured a championship opportunity herself. But if she can go on to win this women's battle royal, there is no reason whatsoever that she can't go on to, to win the championship and really show what she can do. And now she has her up on the shoulders here. What can she do? Oh, and just a stun off the ropes. She's going to go straight into the cover. She thinks she's done enough damage to keep the woman down. Only going to get the one. And now look at Jade. She's snapped. She's losing it. She's getting angry. And we've all seen what she is like when she is angry. Very dangerous woman. Oh, and look at this. Oh, well caught by Vega. Oh, well, well flipped out of that one. Almost looked like an attitude adjustment there from Vega. But well flipped out there by Jade to land on her feet. And now look at this. 
Very nice work there on the backbreaker by Isabella Vega. Vega already had a chance, as I mentioned, at the Women's Championship. Jade yet to capture an opportunity. So this Women's Battle Royal could mean the world to both of them, especially if they can go on a win. Be interested to see, though, who anyone would cash in on, because, of course, Laura Stables has been... Laura Stables has been really, really dominant on her brand, but, of course, she did lose the championship, so maybe there's that vulnerability there. But, of course, over on the other brand, Mayhem, you've got the choices right now of Halle Bowen or Sandra Piper. And that is not odds that I would want to take, especially seeing how powerful Bowen is when facing off against Sandra Piper. It's going to be another explosive matchup between those two, but it's now going to be a fatal four-way because Lulu Torres and Reyes have got themselves into the match. So that's going to be an interesting one. And if one of those could sneak the title, that would be a shock. And maybe then, maybe just then, maybe someone will think maybe the, the Women's Championship on Mayhem is looking up for grabs. Maybe it's uh, approachable. Maybe I'll take that chance. Or maybe they'll prefer their own brand. Looking for the last chancery again. This time brings her down to her knees. Can she flip through? She can! Last Chancery! And this is what put away the Women's Champion! Is it going to be enough to put away Jade? The Last Chancery doesn't fail her a second time! And Isabella Vega is going to sudden death! She is going to be in the Women's Battle Royal! She takes Jade Cottrell down! And despite an impressive showing from Jade herself, she couldn't get the job done here tonight! And Isabella Vega the Master Submissionist again strikes with the last Chancery. The only problem for her, though, is that the Submission Offense will not help her when she gets to the Battle Royal. She's got to toss them over the top rope, and the Submissions will not help her do that. So the question is, will I Isabella Vega be prepared for that Women's Battle Royal? And will she be going to Insomnia if she can win? And who will she take on? So many questions unanswered in this women's division, but we will find answers at sudden death. Let's move on down the rest of the card. Time for some more men's Royal Rumble qualifying. And we already saw today Dino D be awarded one, despite the fact he won't be competing on any more fight nights before the Royal Rumble, just to make sure that he actually does recover in time for it. But also... We saw, um, we also saw the ace Peter Bolton capture an opportunity today. And now we've got one more one-on-one -on -one match. And then we'll have a tag match afterwards for a qualifying. So another tag team is going to find themselves in this Royal Rumble. So the odds will stack up against some people. But others, they will not back down and you know they won't. The first man down to the ring who has finally shown his true colors. has finally shown his true self. He is the ultimate PJ McNair. He definitely showed he truly is the ultimate at Danger Zone as he debuted his new persona and showed to the world that he is here and he is ready to wreak havoc. He said that the demon was just a phase, that the ultimate PJ McNair will be his final form and it will be his most dominant form yet. Well, for someone who's always been around the number one contendership area, but is never able to capture the title. Maybe this is the final step. Maybe this is the final form which is going to allow him to capture the, the championship. And of course, right now competing for a spot in the Royal Rumble match. And that could be a big part of his success if he can get himself a shot at this Royal Rumble. The ultimate one. With a mission tonight. It's not going to be an easy fight. The general manager has prepared someone who needs this opportunity just as desperately as he does. Before the ultimate one, tonight is his big opportunity to show what he can really do on his first night on Friday Fight Night. It's time to put aside the demon and unleash the ultimate one. But his opponent tonight, someone else who needs to uh, unleash himself a bit more, if that is the best way to put it, it is... Soul Man Akira. Now, Soul Man Akira, very much a fan favorite, very popular with the crowd. And unfortunately for him, he just hasn't been able to translate those uh, the popularity marks into victories. And that really has slowed him down and affected his, uh, his win count. But, of course, never shy of opportunities, always ready to step up. Of course, one of the very few men to have actually kept Big Willy down for a count of three. That's an achievement in itself, believe you me. But for Soul Man Akira, 
looking to bounce back and try and rise back to the top and he could do that by getting himself into the Royal Rumble by slaying the ultimate PJ McNair. He'd be the first man to beat the ultimate PJ McNair in what would only be his second fight. If he, anyone is going to prove that he's not ultimate, they need to do it sooner rather than later before he gains momentum. Bell rings and away we go and look at it, Soul Manakira being wise and just rushing straight towards the ultimate one. And of course, uh, Soul Manakira hasn't had much pay-per-view time as of late. Hasn't really found his way on the card, hasn't really forced an opportunity. Of course, being one of the nicest guys on the roster, very hard to find himself someone who uh, dislikes him enough to to want to try and end his career. But the demon, as he was, had many enemies. Found himself on pay-per-view quite a few times. Went for the championship uh, several times for the TV title, and he just couldn't capture it. And now the ultimate one, ready to make the final leap here, and hopefully do what the demon couldn't. And look at this, Soman Akira having to rush out the ring. It's not a good sign considering the hot start that he got off to. The referee having to separate the two for a minute there. The demon trying to make a move. And look at this, now the demon takes him to the outside. Oh, and look at that big takedown there by uh, Soman Akira. And a bit of mind games between the two here. Both of them were no, not strangers to playing the mind games, playing the, the taunting game. But the ultimate one we haven't seen much of. He had an impressive showing against Wilson Woodward. But he needs to show more. He needs to show he can make that final step. The step that the, the ultimate one could not. The uh, step that the demon could not. That the, is the phenomenal one could not. All these, for, all these former stages of PJ McNair. And now this final form has emerged. And he needs to show that it truly is the ultimate form. He's got some good shots in here. Early on uh, Solman Akira. But Solman Akira providing a really good fight back. And now McNair. Begging him to get back to his feet. And now look at this. Oh, went for a drop kick and couldn't connect. Well ducked out of the way there by uh, Soul Man Akira. And now Akira trying to capitalize here. There's a leg drag. Very traditional fight of PJ McNair, despite, of course, his origins. But uh, very skilled combatant to go up against. And, of course, he has the support of the fans the whole way. The Demon hasn't always cared for what the fans think, but he does know that... He only fights He only fights for himself and he fights for pride. Oh, referee gets taken out there. He's kind of in the way of the demon who was trying to maybe set up for the drop kick. But instead, the, the referee gets in, gets out of the way. Uh, gets in the way. Excuse me. And now, the ultimate one being worked on here by Soul Man Akira. He's trying to get himself some momentum. He hasn't really had much of that as of late. And now look at this. What's he thinking? Oh, just wearing down the legs here. With a little uh, leg DDT. And now Soul Man Akira. With some momentum moving forward. A nice series of combination of moves there, but he just couldn't make anything of it. The demons, uh, the, the ultimate one slips behind. I've got to try and stop calling him the demon now. It's been so long with him as the demon, it's going to be weird seeing this new form. But he definitely has changed, and he's changed for the better so far. He's proving that. And now look at this. Here comes McNair. Look at this. Massive drop kick to the opposite corner. And using the Irish whip now to, to throw people off almost. No one's really expecting the Irish whip. And then when they're crashed into the opposite corner, they're not prepared for what comes next. The drop kick as they ricochet off it. And McNair just becoming a bit more unique now. Never before seen this type of... You've never seen a guy quite like this. Went for the clothesline there, Sorman Akira, but he's tossed over the top rope by the ultimate one. Now PJ McNair stomps on the outside. And it's amazing to see all this development happening. We talked about it earlier from the ace. But PJ McNair has come a long way since his debut all the way back in the trial era. Massive code breaker to Solman Akira on the outside. And the demon gets him with another one. It's Solman Akira. Feeling the pressure now from the demon who's already landed a drop kick. Might be looking for that double foot stomp from the top rope if he can connect with it. And now, working away on the limbs of Soul Man Akira. Just trying to soften him up, make the pin a little easier. Oh, he's going for this one. We saw this put away. Wilson Woodward. Beautiful move there by the ultimate PJ McNair. 
beautiful stuff. That's what put away Wilson Woodward. But look at this. Soul Man Akira says no. That's not going to put him away. And Soul Man Akira squares up the target. Remember, a big prize up for grabs. A Royal Rumble opportunity is up for grabs for both of these men. We're both in desperate need of something big to spark their rise to the top. Nice arm twist there by the ultimate one who runs up for to him with a neck breaker. And now going for the double stomp from the top rope to put him away. This could be the end here. There it is. Double foot stomp. And crawls over to make the cover. And the ultimate PJ McNair is going to the Royal Rumble match. Huge victory. Two for two now for the ultimate one. And although we might not be seeing much of him now because of the uh, build up to the Royal Rumble. Big, big implications. And that was what put, put away um, Wilson Woodward that move. But it took the double foot stomp today to get the job done. But another impressive showing from the ultimate PJ McNair. And maybe he was correct in what he was saying. Maybe this truly is his final form. His ultimate form. Maybe this is what's going to get him that world championship or even the television championship or any championship because he's eligible for the cruiserweight as well PJ McNair looking to begin a rise to the top of the WIW rankings is he gonna be able to do that and progress to the main event in insomnia by winning the Royal Rumble we'll have to find out soon enough but another impressive victory from the ultimate PJ McNair. Let's move on down the rest of the card. The final qualifying match then before tonight's big number one contendership main event between all three members of the Wolfpack and I'm sure these two will very much enjoy watching that match shortly after this one. It is Big Boss and Bruiser, Bl Bruiser Brad, the Blood Brothers. And tonight they get a chance courtesy of the general manager to go to the Royal Rumble and it's very clear that the general manager has a lot of high stakes and high, uh, high uh, faith in this tag team so they need to prove that they're worth it they need to prove that they're worthy of the general manager's trust can they do that here tonight that's exactly what they've got to try and do here tonight they don't know who their opponents are yet the general manager has given them opponents but they don't know who their opponents are for the Blood Brothers I'm sure they won't care, they're just hell-bent on destruction. And if they could get into the Royal Rumble, could you imagine having to try and eliminate 500 and 600 pounds of pure, just mass and destruction? From the Blood Brothers' perspective, that would give them one hell of a chance at that Royal Rumble matchup if they could both get in. Oh my! Well, look who their opponents are! They've returned! From injury, it's Harry and Death Lordicus, the Death Ninjas, all back. Harry Austin is back, the Flying Ninja, after being taken out of commission by the Blood Brothers. He has returned into the ring, and he wants some revenge on the Blood Brothers. The Flying Ninjas get a chance to qualify for the Rumble and get revenge for the injuries that they suffered from the Blood Brothers. Of course, Death Lordicus was able to continue fighting and had a television championship match not too long ago. Wasn't able to capture the title. But the Death Ninjas, what an opportunity that presents themselves here tonight. A rivalry rekindled as the bell rings and away we go. And a massive uppercut to start. Of course, Big Boss and Breezer Brad, not with the most impressive record against the Death Ninjas. They've got the better of them on three different occasions. But they managed to beat him when it matters and they put him on the shelves injuring Harry Austin and therefore keeping those two out of the tag team title hunt for the time being and there's a very nice neck snap there by uh, Def Lordicus and uh, Def Lordicus and Harry Austin a very the most unique tag team in WIW they earned that nickname for their very creative styles and uh, combination of moves that they used in the ring very unique no one else quite like Def Lordicus and no one else quite like the Flying Ninja and now Big Boss landing some big strikes early on here on Def Lordicus. Def Lordicus suffered some minor injuries. He was able to compete, though, in the ring while his tag team partner was out for a TV title opportunity. I think I mentioned that. Unfortunately for him, couldn't capture it from Big Willie. And uh, no surprise, to be honest. Uh, big Willie 
was quite dominant before he loses, uh, lost his title at Danger Zone uh, last Sunday. And now look at this. Oh, what a beautiful arm drag there from, uh, from um, Def Lordicus. And now might look to tag in Harry for his per first piece of in-ring action for a little while. In comes Harry. And uh, what's Harry thinking here? Oh, and Harry going to show why they call him the Flying Ninja with a coast-to-coast -coast drop kick. And now look at this. Def Lordicus going to land a finishing blow. What a beautiful tag team combination from the Def Ninjas. A team which no one would think would work. No one would have even put this together. But they put them together. And together they have been a very strong, very competitive tag team. Still haven't had their shot at the tag team titles. I'm sure they would love an opportunity to go and take on David and Steve. Oh, but look at this. The punch is going nowhere for Harry. He can't afford to just stand there and strike with the former boxer of Bruiser Brad. And a lot of people make that mistake. They think because of his size, the quick strikes is the way to go. And it's just not against someone who was a former boxer before coming into WIW. And in comes Big Boss. The size difference always been very much, uh, very much in favor of Big Boss and Bruiser Brad. And even more so up against Harry. Of course, they were feuding for weeks beforehand because they, uh, they believed that Def Lordicus was the reason for all of their losses against the Def Ninjas. And that Harry did nothing. Harry tried his best to prove that it wasn't the case and that they weren't flukes. And as a result, he got injured. And the, br the Blood Brothers, in their eyes, proved their point. They proved they were worthy of a world title hunt. Harry prevents the suplex there by sticking the leg underneath. And now into the corner. Might want to tag out. Wisely, he does. In comes Def Lordicus. And now look at this. Def Lordicus with a running big boot to the face. And the Def Ninjas... Looking to get some revenge here tonight and also book themselves spots in the Royal Rumble match. Could you imagine that? Right now, I think Harry would be the only Austin actually in the Royal Rumble. And uh, Harry hasn't always been the most successful Austin, of course. If you remember back to the trial era, he was almost fr fired by his brother for losing so many matches. But since teaming with Def Lordicus, he's been back on top and really proven himself. And these two are growing as a tag team every day. And I'm telling you what, it's not going to be long before we see these two competing for the tag team titles. Could you imagine the most unique tag team in all of WIW capturing the tag titles? Massive clothesline gets him over the top rope. And imagine if someone was able to do that at the pay-per-view, if they're in the Royal Rumble match, if the Blood Brothers qualify. It'd be very impressive indeed. Will the Blood Brothers be able to once again get the better of the Death Ninjas? Or will the Death Ninjas be able to get themselves the spots in the Royal Rumble and get some revenge? Find out after this quick break. Dormus, the new fragrance by Dormus. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Before the break, the Def Ninjas taking on the Blood Brothers for a spot in the Royal Rumble match. And uh, Def Lordicus and Big Boss have been battling it out throughout the break. And we almost joined back to a Boss Spear. And he was unable to catch it, uh, unable to connect. And uh, Def Lordicus able to sidestep. Now Def Lordicus trying to bring him into the... Def Ninja's corner, he was unable to do that. And now look at this. Well counted there by Big Boss. Missed the spear, but now trying to get some control back in this match. Unable to. But now to the corner. This is a dangerous place to be. We know what he's capable of here. Looking for the split-legged moonsault. Connects with the split-legged moonsault. Very nicely done there by Def Ludicus. And now looking for the finishing touch. To the corner he goes. Looking for the skyscraper elbow drop. This has put them away in the past for more than a count of three. And now look at this. Here they go again. Harry and Def Lordicus, the flying ninja and the unique one, in with a skyscraper elbow drop to the 600 pounder. And is that going to be enough to put him away? No, it's not. Bruiser Brad, no surprise, makes the save. And Harry and Def Lordicus deal with Bruiser Brad and play to the crowd. Quite big fan favorites, of course, for their uniqueness. In characters and personas, no one like the Def Ninjas, that is for sure. And now look at Harry, going to show off his cruiserweight abilities here. And he's being smart, keeping the 
keeping the big man on the ground, trying to show his strength, uh, trying to show his strength, use his strength, as I was trying to say, to his advantage! But Big Boss using his power to his advantage and lands the Big Boss Spear. And uh, what's he thinking now? Thought about tagging out there, but uh, maybe instead just a leg drop. The 600 pounds right to the head. And it could get worse if they go for the half a ton of bricks. And I think that's exactly what they're lining up for here. Looking for half a ton of bricks. Tag is made. And Harry in bad trouble. He's felt the wrath of this before. And this could put him back on the shelves. Boom! Half a ton of bricks to someone who doesn't even weigh like 200 pounds into the cover. And Death Lordicus makes the save. But after that much weight being bared down on such a little body, you have to ask, was it worth making the save? Because Harry's only just come back from injury. He doesn't want to re-injure if he can help it. Harry trying to fight back though. We know he has that fighting spirit that he's... That He's been taught before. Now look at this. Taking the big guy down. Going to use his aerial advantage to affect their big leg drop. Oh, ducks under the clothes. Oh, look at the speed of the flying ninja. Flying with ferocity. And takes him down with a wheelbarrow. Very nicely done there by Harry. Using the momentum. And while he's down. Big. Big standing moonsault. And Harry has just bursted into life in this match. And now Big Boss gonna tag out wisely because uh, the tag himself in wisely because big boss and bruiser brad losing control there as harry gained momentum oh look at harry harry hooks the leg is he gonna be able to get this one done no it's a two i think big boss knew that uh, bruiser brad knew that and that's exactly why he tried to avoid it oh look at this look at this harry lining up for a 619 got him 619 and he even looped himself around his part of this a frog splash to follow through Harry with a 619 to the big boss. And is that going to be enough to put the big boss away and keep them down? No! Two and a half. And the Death Ninja's almost had it. Death Lordic is able to keep down Bruiser Brad and prevent any interruptions from him. But Harry wasn't able to get it done and now trying again, maybe. Here's the sunset flip to the big boss. Using sheer momentum to manage to make that big body fly. Now look at this, he's been very wise now, just using more and more of his aerial prowess to get the job done. Big Boss down on the outside, uh, Bruiser Brad down on the outside. And Big Boss really struggling on the inside. But now trying to turn the tide again, but Harry too fast, too quick for the Big Boss. The 600 pounder, just too slow to deal with him. Now Harry has him in the corner again, what's Harry thinking? Harry once again grabs the arm and looking for that Hurricane Runner again. Doesn't quite look, hook both legs, but he gets the job done. Now Harry might want to consider tagging out there. Just talking to his partner in the corner. Before tagging out, they clearly have devised the plan there between them. How will the plan come into fruition? The Death Ninjas looking great again. They always seem to perform under pressure against the Blood Brothers. They just couldn't do it when there was maximum pressure at the pay-per-view. That caused their injuries. And they're desperate for revenge. And Big Boss desperate to try and turn the tide back in his favor. Big knee to the gut. And we've seen this combination before. Two big knees either side. And following through with a Russian leg sweep. Very nicely done there by Big Boss. And now Big Boss picking him up. Looking for another spear. And he doesn't need much of a run up on it. 600 pounds of weight coming at you is more than enough to keep you down. And now looking for the boss kick. To put him away and to progress to the Royal Rumble. No, oh, he ducks under. He ducks under. Lifeline reached hell here for Death Lordicus. He escapes the kick. And now lands a kick of his own to get out the corner. Now trying to get him into his corner. This is dangerous stuff here for the big boss. This could be costly if this connects. Wait a minute, what's he thinking here? Tag is made. Oh, and a beautiful drop kick there. Another beautiful sequence by the Death Ninjas. The Death Ninjas doing amazingly well to use their strengths to their advantage. Their speed, their quickness, the advantage over the Death Ninjas. Uh, over the over the Blood Brothers is coming more and more apparent. And look at this, another standing moonsault with the man that's down. Harry doing a great job of taking advantage of the big men while they're down. But he has to be careful that they don't overpower him because it ha it's happened many times already in this match. And there's the DDT trying to keep him down. And now Harry to the top rope. Trying to put him away if he can. Harry, what's he got in store for us? Beautiful! 
Phoenix splash and into the cover. Surely that's enough this time. No, he kicks out at two again. What is Big Boss made of? Takes him down there and now going to deal with Death Florticus as well. Multitasking on a whole nother level. And now a leg drop again. Harry doing everything in his power to survive and try and take down the big man. But the big man <coughs> just refusing to stay down after all the damage he's taken. And this is incredible stuff here from Big Boss. We've never seen so much resiliency from the big man. And now Big Boss, Irish whip. Oh, tossed to the outside, right where Big, uh, where Bruiser Brad is. Oh, and look at that. They got in each other's way there. Bruiser Brad apologizes. And that was the right thing to do, just to apologize. Oh, look at this. Harry using his acrobatics, but Harry was about to Irish whipping onto the stairs, and I think Bruiser Brad saw that. And now Harry using his aerial abilities again. Oh, and a beautiful elbow drop from the top rope from the Flying Ninja. And now the Flying Ninja using the stairs to full effect, but Bruiser Brad going to get some payback. He just tosses him away from his partner. In the attempt to protect him, the count is rising. He needs to be wary of that, Harry, but Bruiser Brad not giving him much of a choice in the match. Just tosses him across the ring as if he's a ragdoll, on the outside at least. Count of five. And he might want to get him back in the ring here to wrap this one up, maybe. I think he's going to. And he helps his partner out there by tossing him back in the ring. And now big elbow drop to the head as well, just for good measure. They're both back in the ring. Harry desperately trying to crawl away and make the tag. Can he do it? Yes, he can! Just able to use that aerial ability to fly over the top of that big boot. And in comes Death Lordicus. Went for a spinning forearm, couldn't quite connect with it. Big Boss tags out wisely. He doesn't have much left to offer in this match. He's taken a huge beating. And now Death Lordicus bringing the fight to Bruiser Brad as well. And Death Lordicus is going. And of course, they blame Death Lordicus for a lot of their defeats. And now Death Lordicus might be the cause of another one. Looking for the Mandible Claw. Big strike. Warms up the cloud. The crowd, and the crowd is going nuts. Mandible Claw. Choking him out almost. And into the cover. Harry's not going to be able to stop Big Boss from breaking it up. And the match continues. And that could have been the difference maker right there. Unfortunately, the breakup happened. Harry's still down on the outside. Death Lord is by himself. But doing whatever it takes to wrap up here with the win. What's he thinking here? To the top rope goes uh, Def Lordicus. And now Def Lordicus going to fly. Oh, and a beautiful leg drop. Very nice sequence from, uh, from uh, Def Lordicus. Well, now Harry back to his feet. Big Boss and Bruiser Brad have taken some huge hits. But still refusing to give in. And that's the spirit they are, they are showing. We haven't always seen that from the Blood Brothers. We've just seen them use their strength. But not always get the job done. But it's good to see them really showing some fight back in this match. They don't want to lose to this team anymore or ever again. That was what they were trying to do when they injured them. They were trying to get rid of them for good. And that's exactly what they're trying to do here tonight. And Def Lordicus and Harry Austin would love that shot in the Rumble just as much as the as Big Boss and Bruiser Brad would. And I'm sure the general manager would give the, the Blood Brothers another chance maybe. I don't know. The spots are running out. He can't keep repeating people. So this could be make or break for both of these teams. But right now they both just prefer to break each other down than uh, to, get this, uh, to worry about the rumble spot. Oh, there's the bonsai drop. Bonsai drop from out of nowhere and into the cover. Is this going to be enough now? Has Def Lordicus been taken out? He kicks out at two. Unbelievable scenes. Another incredible match it's been between two top teams. And Big Boss and Bruiser Brad once again can't get the job done. And Bruiser Brad wisely going to tag in Big Boss. He's given a lot of energy, but Big Boss, do you see him holding his chest? He's hurt. Oh, but he's about to lay in even more hurt. Oh, no, I thought he was going to try and drop on him from there. That would have definitely done the damage. Big double clubbing forearm. And Harry was taken out as well and that as Harry uh, tried to break up the, the tag. Harry trying to break up the cover, excuse me. And now Def Lordicus gets Big Boss in the corner. And now Def Lordicus. This is a chance. Split-legged Moonsault. Split-legged Moonsault again. But his partner's down. And out. 
He could go for the cover, but it wouldn't be the wisest decision. But the Blood Brothers are fighting back in this match, refusing to go away. And Death Lordic is right now in survival mode, just waiting for his partner to get back to his feet. He does get back to his feet. But Big Boss once again takes control. Gets him back to his feet. Big strike. Missed. And a big takedown. And as they get to tire, as they start to tire uh, Big Boss and Bruiser Brad, it becomes just a little bit easier to take them off their feet. But not easier to overpower them. Another Big Boss spear. With very little momentum. But it gets the job done due to the sheer size of Big Boss and Bruiser Brad. And now look at this. Irish whip to the corner again. This could be the end if they can connect with half a ton of bricks here again. No! Deflordicus escapes! Very nicely done there by Deflordicus. And now to the opposite corner. Tags in. And looking for that big coast to coast again. Bruiser Brad being kept out of the ring by the referee. And a massive drop kick. And once again, that very nice sequence. Again, as he lands, a big leg drop as he bends over the ropes. And now Harry trying to stop the tag from being made, and he does so with a standing moonsault. And now Harry and Death Lordicus might be ready to put this away. Oh, but Harry made a mistake there, trying to stand and trade strikes with him. Might not have been the best attempt. Uh, might, might not have been the best thing to do. Harry escapes the corner, can't afford to be hit with half a ton of bricks now. This could be the opening. Can Harry finally put this one away? Tag is made. And look at this big clothesline. And now Deflordic is on top. This is what put it away last time when Deflordic was on top. Is it going to be enough? Skyscraper elbow drop number two. Into the cover. Is that going to be enough to put him away for good? Bruiser Brad kicks him out again. And neither team backing down, neither team going away. They both want spots in the Rumble, but I think this is more... This match means more to them than just Royal Rumble opportunities. And now the Mandible Claw being lined up again, this time on Big Boss. Big strike and looking for the Mandible Claw again. Big Boss in trouble, Mandible Claw! Just choking out, closing up all the options for breathing and into the cover again. Surely this time they're going to be able to get the jump done. Count of two as Bruiser Brad gets it done again. And surely there's only so many more times that these guys are going to be allowed to break each other up. Because this is going to... Oh my god, look at this. Oh, and the crossbody Big Boss got very lucky there to roll out of harm's way in time. The match continues. Neither side giving in. They all are just saving their partners' lives, even though they are all taking beatings. And if this carries on, none of them are even going to make it to the Royal Rumble. If they qualify, the boss lining up for the boss kick. Decided against it, though, as he sees Death Lordicus crawling back to his feet. Just going to stop that from happening. Lines him up the way he wants to. He's saying he's going to do this on his orders. <clears throat> Can he get the job done, though? Look, looking for the boss kick again. Missed the first time, but connects the second time round. Moves him away from the ropes and into the cover. His partner's down. He might not be able to stop Harry from getting involved. Oh, and Harry just about makes the save. Bruiser Brad dealing with Harry. Harry taken out and Big Boss and Bruiser Brad now have an opening. With Harry down on the outside. This is getting ridiculously intense. I went for a Boss Spear and Def Lordica survives it. Def Lordicus counters it into a DDT. And now Def Lordicus feels the momentum. The crowd are feeling it as well. This has been an incredible tag team encounter. Looking for the split-legged moonsault again. Split-legged moonsault and straight into the cover. Is that going to be enough to put away the, the big guys? They've done it. Finally, they've done it. Harry Austin and Def Lordicus, the Death Ninjas, are going to the Royal Rumble. They came back and they said they would they would they said they would come back and they said that they would deal with the Blood Brothers again and that they would get the better of them. And this time they actually did. The Blood Brothers defeated once again to the Death Ninjas. And the Death Ninjas have secured themselves spots 
in the Royal Rumble matchup. Huge implications for this win, that big comeback victory. And the crowd go nuts as the, one of the fan favorite teams progress to the Royal Rumble. It is finally time for tonight's huge main event. Main event of the evening. And it is a huge main event. One of the strangest but craziest match types that we have had in WIW to date. It is a triple threat first blood match. The only way to win is by making both of your opponents bleed. That is the only way to win this matchup. Both, the, the only person, the last man standing is the only man who has not bled and that person will be going on to face Max Danger for the World Heavyweight Championship. And this is just cruel from the general manager. Not only is he making them compete against each other, not only is he forcing them to actually try to win, but he's also forcing them to make each other bleed. It's clear what the manager's intention is. He's trying to break down the bonds of the wall pack, trying to break it down from the inside. But as Alex Wilson alluded to earlier, the wall pack will not break and, and go down that easy. First man to the ring is David. The only man in history to capture the Fight Night Tag title twice. Of course, his tag team partners were different on both occasions, but it was all for the Wolfpack's stake. And the Wolfpack wanted to come down together. The general manager once again made them not do that as well. They all have to come down separately. So we get to hear the Wolfpack song three times. And here comes another man down to the ring. David, Steve, and Alex will all be competing for one spot, which they earn together at Danger Zone. And here comes Stephen Thomas, former tag team champion, of course, part of the tag team champions of the Wolfpack. Of course, remember the uh, three bird rule is fully in appliance, so they can switch it around if they choose to and have Steve defend or have Alex defend when they have to. But of course, as they earn the right to at Danger Zone, they do not have to defend their tag team titles at the pay per view. They don't have to because they earn the right to not do that so once again the tag title's not on the line but the general manager has made it clear that they will have to defend it at some point they can't hide away forever David and Alex but for Steve of course I'm sure he would love to shoot back into that tag title picture but of course he's already made it clear he wants some single success went for the TV title not too long ago almost won it had it not been from the interruption from Max Danger but for Steven Thomas we know he's capable of doing it of course but remember, last time Steven and David actually faced off against each other, David won. So Steve, I'm sure, secretly would want to get to revenge. But this is the thing. They need to be careful here, the Wolfpack. They can't turn on each other. They can't make enemies of one another. They've made it clear that they don't want to do that. They're not going to let the general manager get in their heads. But they need to avoid, they need to avoid it the best they can because there is a huge possibility that someone is going to get mad at the loss here tonight. But they need to make sure they stay strong and stay united. If they're gonna let, if they're not gonna let the general manager get the better of them, remember, this is all for the big prize. You gotta look at the bigger picture because the world title is on the line. They can finally capture the world title again and continue to run the Wolfpack era dominantly. And the next man down to the ring, Alex Wilson. Road to glory was not the best of times for him, but he's come to WIW. And he has shown what success stories of the Road to Glory can truly be. And of course, with Road to Glory Season 2 now open for men and women, we're going to be looking for new people to become the next Alex Wilson, to become the next JW Cashman, to become the next uh, James Rowley, who have all gone on to become champions. But tonight, this man has a chance of capturing a second championship. And the Wolfpack, I believe, will do uh, a rotation. So, uh... If one of them is the tag title holder, so David or Steve, if David or Alex lose and Steve is to win, then obviously it doesn't matter. But if if uh, David and Steve win and Alex loses, uh, wait, if Alex wins or David wins, then they will hand the tag title over to Steven and they will go on to pursue the World Heavyweight Championship. And of course, it's all rotational, so it wouldn't really matter. They'd all be still under the same title reign. The tag team champions... All collide here tonight. Remember, this is a triple threat 
first blood match. And look at this, going straight for Steve here. Alex Wilson, not going to waste any time. And look at this, Alex Wilson, who has made it clear he's interested in a singles run. And he wants a shot at Max Danger. He actually did pin Max Danger at the pay-per-view. Remember, this is a triple threat first blood. So everyone who bleeds is eliminated. It's a gruesome matchup. It is extreme rules, so no count outs, no disqualification, and of course no rope breaks as there will be no pinfalls or submissions. So David, Steve, and Alex with no leader of King Sam, who is still nowhere to be seen. They will fight each other in attempts to make each other bleed. Will this ununite the wolf pack like the general manager wants, the, wants to happen? But I'm sure this is going to be an entertaining match. Three top tier superstars, all world championship caliber in their own right. And they proved that at Danger Zone. And now look at this, David going to run amok here. David much the powerhouse of the team. And as I mentioned last time, David and Steve faced off. They actually did. Uh, it did end with David picking up the victory. Of course, that was much in uh, much less extreme circumstances than it is now. Very nice work there from Steve. Three of the best on the roster, and that's exactly why they're Wolfpack members. David would, n uh, King Sam would not have let him join the Wolfpack if he didn't see the potential on him. And a nice double team there from Alex Wilson and David, the tag team champions as they are currently working together there to deal with the threat of Steven. Of course, we know that all of these men, once they get going, are serious threats. Look at that, David refusing to go off his feet there for da for Alex and the super kick. And the good thing about this match as well is that they're all on an even playing field. They all know each other's strengths. They all know each other's weaknesses. They also know how lethal they all are. Did you see the connection on that Inziguri? And Steve did well to take out Alex there for the second. Now it goes back to his uh, best friend, David. And of course, that's the thing. They all are best friends. They cheat each other like brothers. And it is Wolfpack for life. They made it clear. But tonight, they're doing this for the good of the team. Because one of them has to prove that they are the one who's going to take on uh, um, Alex, uh, no, Max Danger for the World Heavyweight Championship at Sudden Death. Will they be able to do that? No, that's the question. Went for a belly to belly. Well counted by the powerhouse David. Very much a power lifter, as he's proven in his wrestling and also in his training. This is going to be one hell of a matchup. I'm so looking forward to this. It's been a great start so far. Fast pace, high intensity, and they are proving that they are not backing down. Because remember, the general manager said, if it is clear that they are not trying and not giving 100% effort to win this match, then the general manager will not give any of them the opportunity. And now look at this, Alex. Oh, look at this. Caught Steve taunting after taking out his partner. And oh, look at that. Getting caught taunting, that's not very nice in a match like this when it's just a bunch of friends going at each other. But then again, they're going to have to be brutal with each other. They can't hold grudges. They can't afford to hold grudges. And now in the corner, Alex has David in a bad position here. Oh, David well countered though and now has a position in the top rope as he hits the crossbody. Now David to the outside. Looking on the ring. It's aggressive. But it's smart. Easiest way to make someone bleed is a clean shot to the top of the head. But Alex not going to let him do it. And now David getting targeted by David and Alex. Uh, by Steve and Alex. Now Alex, big close on, went for the knee. Well counted there by Steve. And now Steve, what's he thinking here? Trying to hook him. Oh, and a package pile driver. Very nicely done there by Steve. A package power bomb, should I say. And now Steve lining up for a super kick. Alex Wilson in trouble. Well ducked. Well ducked there by Alex Wilson. Gets out of harm's way. And Alex Wilson gets behind as well for an inverted DDT. He needed that sequence. And now Steve. Steve and Dave, they've proven in the past they can make people bleed. However, Alex Wilson has never made someone bleed before. Will he be able to do it here tonight, though, against two of his trusted friends and teammates? And now look at this. Beautiful move there by Alex Wilson. And now David was trying to line up for something big. And now he's going to be made to pay. Flip over DDT from the apron position. <coughs> what a move by Alex Wilson. Now Wilson brings him back to his feet, unable to do that. David tried to roll out the way, but then went straight back into his arms. And now Alex has him on the middle rope. 
Remember the key to a match like this, target the head. And that's exactly what he's trying to do here. Oh, and a face buster. And Steve now back in the ring. Alex Wilson didn't see him, but he's able to count on the belly to belly again. And now Wilson to the corner, lining up for the flip over DDT. They're both going to get up at the same time, but I think he's going for Steve. Flip over, DDT, and Steve has busted open. Steven is eliminated. Steven is busted open. And now we're down to Alex and David, the tag team champions currently. I'm trying to go for this kick here, but David keeps sidestepping and gets off the ropes. Alex Wilson makes the first man bleed here. And now it's David and Alex, the tag team champions. One on one. Next one to bleed loses. The winner going on to face for the tag, uh, face for the world championship. Package pile driver from Dave. One of his most lethal moves, but it didn't make him bleed. To the outside he goes. And Steven respectfully doesn't complain, just walks out. This may be about the championship for the Wolfpack, but it is all about togetherness. They're not going to hold grudges, or at least they're going to not try to. But you can't help but feel, that though, that there's going to have some backlash after this. After a brutal match like this, a triple threat. And of course, we've already seen one man bleed and be eliminated because of it. Will there be a second bit of blood? Remember, it's falls count anywhere, technically, I guess, because no one can be eliminated. Uh, no one can be eliminated by count out disqualification. It's only about making them bleed. Cross leg, Michinoku driver by Alex Wilson. And a lot of people saying they want King Sam back, and this is exactly why King Sam would have never let something like this happen. But they had to do it. They're doing this for King Sam. And now, Alex Wilson, ready to put away his tag team partner. Looking for the bitter end. Is it going to be enough to bust him open? No, it's not. Bitter end connects cleanly. But it's not enough to make David bleed. David refusing to back down here. Beautiful suplex there by Alex Wilson. And we know it's going to take a lot to make these guys bleed. Just trying to ground and pound to bust him open. And he does it. Alex Wilson makes David and Steve both bleed. And now Alex Wilson has confirmed his spot at sudden death. He is going to face for the tag, uh, for the WIW World Heavyweight Championship against Max Danger. A big win for him in the Wolfpack. Well, two of them walk off bleeding. But they have walked out with a mutual goal of getting a world championship opportunity. Alex did everything he could here tonight. And he walked out the winner. It takes some ground and pound work at the end to get it done. But Alex Wilson wins the triple threat first blood match. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like if you did. Comment your thoughts and feelings on tonight's show. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Be sure to apply for the Road to Glory tournament if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.